In organic macromolecules, functional groups are groups of atoms that convey particular properties when they're present in an organic molecule. There are several functional groups you're responsible for knowing. The methyl group, the hydroxyl group, the carboxyl group, the amino group, the sulfhydro group, and the phosphate group. These are the ones I want you to know. We'll take them one by one. And for each one of these, you need to know what it looks like, what its symbol is, and what property is associated with it. So here is our methyl group. A methyl is a carbon bound to three hydrogens, and then the carbon bound to something else, usually another carbon. Notice how it's written here. The whole CH3, HC3 thing, H3C, it's just a left or a right convention in a diagram. The carbon is what's bound to other atoms, not the hydrogens. They're bound to the carbon. Methyl groups create regions that are hydrophobic within a molecule. So any place we CH3, see CH3s or methyl groups, think hydrophobic. And here are some examples. This is the nonpolar amino acid leucine, and it's got these two CH3 groups in it. And here's cholesterol, which we saw in the reading a molecular diagram video. And you can see these five methyl groups help make this already very hydrophobic cholesterol molecule more hydrophobic. Hydroxyl groups consist of an oxygen bound to a hydrogen, and that oxygen covalently bound to some other particle, often a carbon. Whereas methyl groups made for hydrophobic regions, hydroxyl groups create regions of hydrophilic property within a molecule. So here's glucose, sugar, and you can see glucose has many hydroxyl groups in it. And here's cholic acid. Now cholic acid is very similar to cholesterol. It's predominantly hydrophobic, and you can see all the carbon and hydrogen in this molecule, and you can see the methyl groups, but it also has several hydroxyl groups, and each of those hydroxyl groups make for a region of hydrophilic interaction. Now you notice there's one OH I haven't labeled here because that one OH isn't actually a hydroxyl group because of where it's bound, and we'll look at that next. The next one is the carboxyl group. Our carboxyl is a carbon double bound to an oxygen and also bound to a hydroxyl group or an OH, and it can be drawn as shown here. Keep in mind that OH, when it's bound to a carbon, which is double bound to another oxygen, that's not a hydroxyl group, that is a carboxyl group. The carboxyl group can act like an acid. That's what the carboxyl group does. So when carboxyl groups are present, we have organic acids. So here's stearic acid, a fatty acid, and you can see most of stearic acid structure is just carbon and hydrogen, but over on the left-hand side there is a carboxyl group. Here is glutamic acid, an amino acid, and you can see that this amino acid has two carboxyl groups in it, the COOH, C double bound to O, bound to an OH. Carboxyl groups make for acids. If something makes for acids, something else must make for bases. The amino group, a nitrogen covalently bound to two hydrogens, NH2, makes organic molecules act as bases. So here we have the organic substance urea, a central carbon double bound to an oxygen bound to two amino groups, which is going to act as a weak base. Lysine, the amino acid, and you can see several, or two, I'm sorry, several, two NH2 groups here. And here's aspar uh, asparaginine, another amino acid, which also has an NH2 group in it. Aminos make substances act like bases. Sulfhydryl groups, as the name implies, have a sulfur in them, and sulfur covalently bound to a hydrogen. Sulfhydryl groups are especially important in protein structure. They form strong double bonds when you get two of them together, form what we call disulfide bridges, so they stabilize complex molecular structure. So here we see cysteine, the amino acid with the sulfhydryl group, and here's another organic substance called coenzyme A, which has a sulfhydryl group on the end. Again, sulfhydryl groups stabilize molecular structure when we get two sulfhydryl groups together by forming a disulfide bridge. Phosphate groups, an oxygen covalently bound to a phosphate, covalently bound to another set of oxygens, three oxygens altogether, one with a double bond, 
notice two of the oxygens are carrying negative charges. They're carrying full negative charges. Those aren't partial charges. The phosphate group has a negative charge, so it makes molecules negative and hydrophilic, and it plays an important role in energy cycling. You may recognize from the anabolic catabolic videos, the phosphate here was the same phosphate that was in ATP and ADP. Phosphates are important in energy cycling. So here's citidine monophosphate with a large phosphate group coming off. And there's adenosine triphosphate again, ATP, with three phosphate groups in a row. Just remember, all of these groups, methyl hydroxyl carboxyl amino sulfhydryl phosphate. Methyls make things hydrophobic. Hydroxyls make things hydro uh, hydrophilic. Carboxyls make things acidic. Aminos make them basic. Sulfhydryls provide for molecular stability. And phosphates make hydrophilic and negatively charged substances that are important in energy transfers. Make sure you recognize all of these groups and can pl uh, place them with the appropriate properties. You will be expected to do this on every exam.